Good morning, Sculpers. Welcome to the Writer's Ink Horns Prayer Scope. Good morning. I come in because he's in love with me. With my heart beating expectantly. We're entering into the chambers of the king. I run into the arms of my king. I thank God for your safety, Lisa. This morning, we're going to be praying about spiritual discernment. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready. Because there's so much that's going on in our earth. And I've just been talking to God and asking him about what's been going on. And he just put it in my spirit that we need to begin to pray more for spiritual discernment. So that we know what he's doing in the earth. So that we know how he's operating through various situations and circumstances. And even through certain people. So today I'm going to go ahead and pray this prayer from Kimberly Daniels on the prayer for spiritual discernment. Father, we thank you for priestly discernment. The gift of discernment. And the discernment of the born again believer. We get in place to operate in these anointings where they apply in our life. Connect us with the fivefold ministry gifts that will sharpen our discernment. We draw from the anointing where our iron sharpens iron. We renounce all false motives and wrong spirits that would affect our discernment in a negative manner. We purpose to pursue the things that are after the spirit and renounce things that are after the flesh. We declare that the righteousness of the law will be fulfilled in us because we renounce and do not walk in the things of the flesh according to Romans 8, 4 through 5. We declare that carnality is our enemy. We are spiritually minded and renounce the death and renounce the death of carnality. The carnal mind is the enemy of God. And also the enemy of us. We renounce the things of the flesh which, can, which cannot please God. According to Romans 6 verses 6 through 8. We are giving ourselves wholly to the word of God and to the spirit of God. We, we are growing daily in the things of God and will never become addicted to spiritual milk. We want your meat, O oh God. We strive for the maturity of God. And the mental, our mental faculties are trained by practice to discern and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil or contrary to the divine law. God, you have anointed us to exercise and discern between what is light and what is dark, according to Hebrews 5, 13. We are striving toward being skilled and experienced in the doctrine of righteousness. We are in conformity with the divine will of God in purpose, thought, and action. We are qualified to speak the oracles of God according to Hebrews 5.14. We are sheep and we will not follow strange voices. We walk in the anointing of, of that which is to know God according to John 10, 4-5. We hear what God is saying and we are qualified to repeat it. The mantle of dis discernment is upon us. Lord, stretch out your scepter unto us in every situation so that we will have wisdom and authority to use what you have revealed to us. We declare that we are empowered by God to see in the spirit realm. This realm includes what is dark and what is light. We will not fear what God shows us in the dark realm. God has given us power over all dark power, the powers of darkness. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Love and a sound mind. We thank you, Lord, for the things which you reveal to us in our five senses. We will be a good steward. 
We will renounce the things that are in our mind that will try to deceive us through strongholds. We cast them down. We announce that our insight comes through the Holy Spirit realm. And every generation on third eye, even back to the Garden of Eden, is closed in our bloodline. We will only receive that which is communicated by the Holy Spirit. We vow to operate in the spiritual integrity of discernment, which forbids us to trap, tap into things that God has not allowed us or uh, wants us to be revealed. We will seal revelation in the spirit because we will maintain a good balance in discernment. We renounce the natural man, the world, and the devil. Our spirit cannot be infiltrated by powers of these forces. Lord, we thank you for using the, the spirit of discernment in our life to become an asset to our families. We also allow it to bring a contribution to the kingdom. Let information and revelation come to the saints through teaching. Let gifts be given to the saints through impartation. Let resources come to the church through equipping. Let discernment be turned on in the lives of your people through activation. We declare that the people of God will not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy and that they will sharply detect the wiles of the devil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we want to seal this under the blood of Yeshua. We want to cover all those under the sound of my voice, those who are watching live and those who will watch the replay. Father, we thank you for, for the spiritual discernment in this day. And Father, I thank you that right now you are stabilizing the islands. You are stabilizing the islands of Trinidad right now. Your angelic foot is on that land right now. Stabilize it. Stabilize it. Stabilize it in the name of Jesus. God, we just send forth those angels, those warring angels, God. Give us clarity of ear. Give us, uh, open our eyes so that we may see what you are doing in this hour, God. We need to know what you're doing. We need to know what your heart is. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name for you are worthy. You're so worthy to be praised, God. We honor you and we bless you and we thank you. And we seal this under the blood of Yeshua in Jesus' name. Now I want to speak Psalm 91 of protection over you today. Psalm 91 of protection. It is such a powerful prayer. It covers us at all hours of the day. We are called and commissioned to pray continually because we don't know what the next moment, the next hour, the next second is going to bring. We need the spiritual discernment to know when the enemy is coming us, coming to us through people, through those that we know, through those that we trust, through those that watch us, through those who are trying to do things to keep us off that narrow path. To keep us, our voices silenced. And we just thank God that he is moving forth in this hour. You know, this morning he gave me, um, he led me to the story of Naaman. And Naaman was the king of Syria. He was a man of valor, a mighty man of war. But he had leprosy. And one of the people that he had captured was this servant girl from Israel. Um, he was being the king of Syria. You know, Israel and Syria are always at war. Even when I was there in 1995. They were still at war with each other. Well, anyway, this girl from the, the one of the captives, the servant girl from Israel, said to to um someone, they said, "Hey, if he would just go over to Israel, there's a man who can heal him." So the king misunderstood what he said, and he had his servant write a letter, and he sent it to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel, when he read it, he ripped his clothes. He said, well, "Who am I that I can heal this man?" Who am I that I can heal this man? And so the prophet Elisha heard what he what the king had done, and he said, "Send him to me." So Naaman took up all his his resources and his servants, and he went to Elisha. And Elisha sent out his messenger, and his messenger gave him the message from um, Elisha, and he told him to go and dip in the river. Of Jordan seven times and the king was upset because he was like I can, you know I can imagine he's probably saying I came all this way for you to just tell me to dip in the river could not dip in the, the river of Damascus don't we have cleaner waters over there so you can even hear in his message that he felt that the waters of Damascus were cleaner than the waters of Jerusalem so one of his servants said hey if he asked you to do something hard would you not do it 
why won't you just go and just dip in the water as he asked you? So he did. And when he dipped after the seventh time, they said the leprosy that was on his skin that he had been uh, battling with was clean. It was just pure and like a baby skin, they said. And, and so he was so honored and thankful that the prophet, what the prophet had shared with him, he wanted to go and give him a prophet's reward. A lot of times don't people don't give prophets rewards to false prophets and they need to give it to those people who are helping them maneuver through this life and helping them uproot. And so that's where we kind of get things mixed up because the prophet will determine whether or not he wants to accept that reward or not. And when he came back, Elijah said, no, I don't want anything. I don't want anything. So the king, he said, well, at least let me give you some sheep or something so that you can sacrifice to your God because I'm going to now serve your God because your God is the true God. Well, as the story goes, and you know, he sent him on his way and then he didn't take anything from him. And Gehazi, Elijah's servant, went and said, oh, he should take something. So he went and coerced the man, convinced him to give him something. And when Elijah, he got back to Elijah, Elijah said, where'd you go? And he said, well, um, I wasn't anywhere. And he said, well, you know what? <laughs> you know, wasn't my heart with you when you went and asked that man for money? Especially after he had told him he didn't want anything. So sometimes prophets don't take things, but they listen to the voice of God. He didn't want anything for this man, for this man's healing. Sometimes people want money for everything you do. You can't say anything without them giving you some money. But that's not the way God operates. Sometimes, you know, if you feel it in your heart, he didn't ask him for a specific amount. That's another thing prophets do. Sometimes I hear pro false prophets, I should say. False prophets will ask you for money. Get in the $10,000 line. Get in the $1,000 line. Give me $50. No, that person gave what he had, what she had. You give what you feel that God has put in your spirit to give. You don't let anyone coerce you into giving something for a word of God. Anyway, that's my little rant. As the story goes, when he came back, he told him, Gehazi. The leprosy that jumped off of Naaman is going to now come on to you and to your descendants. And that last word really touched my spirit because when we do things that offend God and, and offend God's people and God's messenger, there are things that jump on us for, for his descendants. It is said forever. Can you imagine? I don't want to carry the burdens of my ancestors, something that my ancestors did that has ignited a curse that is affecting me today. So that's why we continue to pray and we ask God for his mercies because God will cleanse those people. That's why he has a remnant. Many are called, but few are chosen. God calls us. He calls us to his kingdomship, but many people don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to, to do what God has called us to do. But that is my morning message, and that is my morning prayer. God willing, if he leads me, I'll be back on this afternoon for a prophetic moment. God bless you, Lisa. May he stabilize the islands. May he keep you and your family covered. God is shaking the lands. He's shaking the land. He is shaking the land. He's doing a new thing in this hour, and we need the spiritual discernment to know. So just to reset, for those who are joining on the replay, my name is Deborah Taylor. I'm an author and co-founder of the Writers Inquiry International. I come to you Tuesday through uh, Thursday mornings, and I offer a sacrifice, a sacrifice of prayer to get you in position to teach you how you can begin to pray when Periscope is down, when the Internet is down, when you don't have anything but God to call on, when you are face-to-face -face with God alone. If you take these teachings and you take what I'm sharing with you and you begin to apply it in your life, God will honor you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So just uh, I'll talk to you guys later. This is Deborah Taylor, the writer's ink horn, where God is the writer and we are his ink horn. And I bless you guys. I bless you, Lisa. Give Isabel a big hug and tell her to study hard, study hard. God will keep you guys in the times of trouble. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him. Amen. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.